In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can solve an inequality to find out what values the variable x is representing. Solving inequalities is very similar to solving equations. Trying to get the variable alone by adding and subtracting first, multiplying and dividing next. There is one little exception, which we'll talk about in another video, but for now, we'll say it's very similar to solving equations. And once we solve, get the x alone, we know what values x can be. We go through the three steps. We first solve it, then we will graph the inequality, and then we will express the graph in interval notation. Three-step process. So, for example, in our first inequality, we have 7 plus 5x is less than 17, or equal to. Just like we balanced on the equal sign before, we can balance on the or e on the less than or equal to. To get rid of the 7, then, first, we subtract 7 from both sides, just like we always solved. This gives us 5x is less than or equal to 10. And then, finally, to get the x alone, we know we can divide both sides by 5, just like solving a regular equation. We just have less than or equal to in the middle. x is less than or equal to 2. Now that we're done solving, we're going to graph the solution on a number line. We'll put 0 here and 2 up here. And again, we'll notice the or equal to part of the inequality. The or equal to means we have a closed solid dot at 2. To decide on our direction, we think about what the symbol means. We've got less than or equal to. x is less than. x is a smaller number. So we need to go off the graph towards the smaller numbers and down. We can now use this graph to help us come up with interval notation. Interval notation is small, comma, big. We see it goes off forever to the left, off to negative infinity, and then it stops at 2 with a closed dot. So negative infinity, comma, 2. Now, infinity and negative infinity always get a curved parentheses. At 2, we notice the closed dot, or the or equal to of the inequality, both meaning we need a square bracket on the inequality in interval notation. So this becomes our interval notation, saying that if we take any number from negative infinity to 2 and plug it in for the x in the original equation, or I'm sorry, in the original inequality, we'll end up with a true statement, an inequality that works. Let's try one that's a little more involved. In example 2, again, we'll balance through the inequality symbol, just like we balance through an equal sign, and start solving. We remember from solving, you simplify the left and right side completely first, which means we need to do a little distributing. 3x plus 24 plus 2 is greater than 5x minus 20. We can still combine like terms, so we've got 3x plus 26 is greater than 5x minus 20. Once it's simplified, then we need to get the variables all on one side. I usually suggest moving the smaller one. So we'll subtract 3x from both sides, and you get 26 is greater than 2x minus 20. Now it's a two-step inequality. We're going to add 20 to both sides. That gives us 46 greater than 2x. Finally, to get the x alone, we'll divide both sides by 2, and the x is alone. We've got 23 is greater than x. Now we're ready to graph this inequality. Put 0 here, so we have a reference point. 23 is way off out here. As we graph, we see at the 23, there's no or equal to. It's just less than. Because it's just less than at 23, we need an open dot. 
And then we need to decide which direction to go, and be very careful here. Several students think about the inequality symbol as an arrow, and the arrow is pointing to the right, and so they graph it off to the right. Well, the right's going to give us bigger values. This is saying 23 is bigger than the x, which means the x is smaller than, going backwards, the x is smaller than 23. The x is the smaller value here. The graph must go towards smaller numbers. So be careful not to think of the inequality symbol as an arrow. It is not an arrow. It tells us which number is bigger, and if the variable is smaller, we go to smaller numbers. If the variable is bigger, we go to bigger numbers. Interval notation now, we see the smallest value all the way off to the left is negative infinity. The graph obviously stops at 23. N infinity and negative infinity always get a curved bracket. 23, because there's an open dot, because it's just l greater than or less than, depending on which way you're reading it. We'll use a curved parentheses. So solving inequality is very similar to solving equations, and then we can graph and do interval notation. There is one exception to solving that we need to be careful of, and we'll discuss that in the next video.